So I moved to Rhode Island since the last time I was here. I wanted to be, live near the sea. And it turned out to be more affordable to do so in Rhode Island than here in Massachusetts. So I could certainly relate to Lewis's song about gone to the water. And I didn't end up exactly at the, at the sea itself, but I live near the bay. I can see it from my window. Uh, it's affected, it's an extension of the sea, affected by the tides, has rhythmic movements, and seagulls. But I, uh, I didn't bring a poem from the sea, I brought a poem from a dream. It's called, it was a dream about a bridge in the sky. While traipsing across a bridge in the sky, a whispering came over the breeze. How did you get here? You have no wings. My answer was, I came in a dream. So I can't say how long I'll be. But I'm hoping to find that angel eye that enables one to read between the lines. Now I had that dream a few nights ago, yet the whispering breeze questions me still. Why do you insist on knowing the truth when it only alienates you? There are worse fates than alienation, I replied with those persistent glimpses, like fleeting fairies gnawing away at your defenses, till you find yourself surmising. Perhaps there's some truth to the rumor of the light at the end of the tunnel leading to where the heretics abide. Then again, last night, I dreamed of crossing that bridge in the sky with this time the breeze whispering coyly, no need to be in such a hurry, journeyman, as there is no other side, no other side, no other side. Thank you very much. Hello, Hopkinson. Hello. Now normally, I like to bring my very best poetry to Cheryl's venue, but this is October, and Halloween's right around the corner, so instead I decided to entertain you with the funny story of the day. This is my favorite Halloween story. Now sometimes, when you think about Halloween, you think about ghosts, right? And what do ghosts say when they speak? They say, boo. So when I finish with this story, I don't want you to applaud my, report, uh, uh, my performance. I want you to make like a ghost and say, boo. But not just boo, but boo, OK? A tourist in Vienna is walking past a graveyard on October 31st. All of a sudden, he hears some music. Nobody's around. So he starts searching for the source. He finally locates the origin and finds that it's coming from a grave with a headstone that reads Ludwig von Beethoven. 1770 to 1827. Then he realizes that the music is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. But it's being played backwards? Puzzled, he leaves the graveyard and persuades a friend to return with him. By the time they arrive back at the grave, the music has changed. Now it's Beethoven's Seventh Symphony being played, but like the previous piece, it too is being played 
backwards. Curious, the men decide to consult a music scholar. When they return with the expert, after telling him about the music that they had heard, the Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is being played, again, backwards. The expert notices that the symphonies are being played in the reverse order in which they were composed. The ninth, the seventh, and then the fifth. The next day, the word had spread, and a throng had gathered around the grave. They were all listening to Beethoven's second symphony being played backwards. Just then, the graveyard's caretaker ambled up to the group. Someone in the crowd asked if he had an explanation for the music. Oh, it's nothing to worry about, said the caretaker. He's just decomposing. Everybody, boo! Thank you very much. Happy Halloween, everybody! short tanka, but it was a little bit longer. When uh, my parents died five years ago and my dad yeah, he had dementia, um, you know, like a lot of people do at the end of their lives. So I wrote some poems uh, about him. My father is like an aging sun that can't remember how to shine and keeps recycling the same old light telling the same stories over and over. And I say, yes, Dad, yes, and I don't mind, remembering how I grew in the garden of his wisdom, remembering all the times that he didn't mind. For uh, any of you who uh, do not have uh, enough gray hair to remember, Many of the people in, uh, many in my generation before and for a while after learned how to read with Dick and Jane. The poem is Dick and Jane. Would Dick and Jane be just another Dick and Jane if we hadn't met them when we were small and scared, sitting in a dark, dismal schoolhouse on Nikolai Street? abandoned by our mothers to the wicked witch of the East. How we dreaded having to read about you out loud, one at a time, as Miss Gulch thrust her pointer at her hearts. A few kids in our class could have been Dick or Jane. A few might even have had a dog like Spot. They read easily, unlike Mark, who haltingly stuttered through the page as if walking on hot coals, or me, whose heart became a kettle drum as I waited my turn. Yet now, as Dick and Jane turn 84, and persevere as young and cute as ever, while the rest of us have withered and creased. 
Now I find myself grateful to you, to your vanilla friend Sally and Spot too. It took a while, but we learned to read. The dread of reading in class became the sweet pleasure of reading on our own. Jane holding Dick's hand, throwing a ball to Spot, talking endlessly. Look, look, Dick, see Spot run? Look, look at car, look at the car. See the car, Sally? See the car, Spot? Look out, Spot! Oh, no, Dick. Oh, no, Spot. Poor Spot. By giving us the words, you gave us the world. Thank you, Dick and Jane. Sorry, Spot. <laughs> Checking out the groceries, I've got a hunger in my head. Feed me existentially, don't get any crumbs in bed. You've had so many crumbs in bed, I'm not another crumb in bed. Toast and crackers, nuts to chew, you feed me and I feed you a gustatory ecstasy. It's a little hard to sleep with crumbs in bed. They keep me up. I'm up all night. Let's dim the light. Oh, let's eat all night, eat all night, eat all night, and make a few more crumbs in bed. Eat all night, eat all night, eat all night, and make a few more crumbs in bed. Poppy bagels with cream cheese, I feed you and you feed me. Poppy seeds drop there full here, you pick one, eat it from my beard, from my beard. And don't get any crumbs in bed, you've had so many crumbs in bed. I'm not another crumb in bed. Oh, let's eat all night, eat all night, eat all night and make a few more crumbs in bed. Eat all night, eat all night, eat all night, and make a few more crumbs in bed. Checking out the groceries, I've got a hunger in my head. Feed me existentially, we won't get any crumbs in bed. They keep me up. I'm up all night. Let's dim the light. Oh, let's eat all night, eat all night, eat all night, and make a few more crumbs in bed. Eat all night, eat all night, eat all night, and make a few more crumbs in bed. Crumbs in bed. Crumbs in bed. I'm not another crumb in bed. Thank you. This is a new song. We are pet goats. They're rescues from the MSPCA. Their job is to live out in the field and eat poison ivy. We named them for famous female scientists and engineers. Jocelyn Bell Burnell, who discovered the pulsar, but her 
supervisor was the one who got the Nobel Prize. Rosalind Franklin, who worked out a lot of the structure of DNA, but also didn't get a Nobel Prize. Grace Murray Hopper, computer pioneer who invented COBOL. And Tabitha Babbitt, a shaker who invented the circular saw. And I realized that if you put their names together in the right order, it was almost poetry. So I wrote them a song. Girls are playing in a party, they groom from tip to toe. Sure to be music and dancing, regular fade o dough. Inviting all the neighbors, woodchuck, squirrel, and rabbit. Jocelyn, Rosalind, Grace, and Tabitha Babbitt. Girls are feeling their oats today, a sparkle in their eyes. Sun is higher in the sky, south winds on the rise. Scent on the breeze of flowers and trees and leaves to tease the palate of Jocelyn, Rosalind, Grace, and Tabitha Babbitt. Birds are returning, maples are budding, daffodils dreaming of bees busy bumbling, rain early morning brings scent of earth warming, bullfrogs are singing cause tadpoles are squirming, every blushing sunrise, a new world is revealed, and the girls are going dancing in the field. Girls are feeling frisky, ready to paint the town. Shaking off their winter coats, don their summer gowns. Fun flew south with the bluebirds, now it's back, so grab it. Say Jocelyn, Rosalind, Grace, and Tabitha Babbitt. that I wear is I, I'm a researcher, and sometimes I research um, about people a couple hundred years ago. So it really started me thinking, and that brought me to this new poem that's called <clears throat> We Are All the Ghosts of Tomorrow. 300 years from now, will my descendants look from my records and find all my Facebook posts, my emails, my searches, my stuff saved on the clouds, my YouTube watches, my Netflix movies. This recording that is done and the hum of computers and clouds holding on to everything, what is that all about? Millions of data, bits and pieces of a life recorded now, so when I'm a ghost, my descendants will find out who I really am. 
Will I appear as a hologram like prints? DNA, fingerprints, eye recognition? How will I appear in ghostly form? Thank you. So um, as some of you might know, uh, for the past two years, since Trump's election, I've been kind of focusing my songwriting on, um, they originally started out as protest songs, and they morphed into social justice songs, and now they're kind of like uh, observational insights about what's been happening to our country. And uh, some of them are happy, There's, some of them are sad, some of them are blues. Uh, I'm giving a concert that is trying to bring a lot of these songs together next Saturday at the Somerville Armory Cafe. It's a benefit for Indivisible Somerville, for those of you who know what, who Indivisible is. And I'm playing with a group called The Lied Twos. It should be fun. We're all in this together. Brother, don't you know? All in this together, that's just how we roll. Going through dark times, dark forces rule the land. They won't go away unless we make a stand. I ain't standing no place. Unless I stand with you I ain't going nowhere Unless you go in too All in this together Body and soul All in this together That's just how we roll You say you got some ideas and we disagree That might be true But ideas are just like leaves They come in different colors Offer you some shade But in the end They all fall down with the difference They thought they made All in this together that's how they made the mold All in this together That's just how we roll They put us in our places Call us dumb and smart Wear different colors That make us look apart But that kind of branding it only goes so far Deep inside You all know how similar we are All in this together So the story's told All in this together That's just how we roll That's just how we roll At the end of the day we rise together, fall together, though it don't seem that way. Someone always seems to be putting up a fight. But there won't be no victory until we can unite. All in this together, so don't misread the road. All in this together, that's just how we roll. The first piece is Alone. From childhood's hour, I have not been. As others were, I have not seen. As others saw, I could not bring my passion from a common spring. 
From the same source I have not taken, my sorrow I could not awaken, my heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone. Then, in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life was drawn, from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still, from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view. And my second piece is a dream within a dream. Take this kiss upon thy brow, and in parting with you now, this much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. In a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of the surf-torrented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep. While I weep, while I weep. O oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream. Thank you. Mm -hmm.